Welcome to Tech Simplified, and my name is Sly Gittins. And today, I have an amazing lady with me today, Kat. She's going to tell you all about her story, what mentoring means to her, and how she's continuing to do a trailblazer within a woman in technology. So Kat, would you please share your background and your career journey? Sure. Thanks, Sly. And thanks for having me. I'm having a blast already. Um, I am, uh, I've actually started, uh, really wanted to study genetics. Uh, I know that's an odd, an odd thing to pursue, but I was really excited about the kinds of technologies and the, and the type of science that was happening when I first uh, finished high school. So I started majoring in genetics, but quickly uh, changed major because of one really freaky thing. Um, my husband, at the, well, my boyfriend at the time, uh, brought me to go see the movie Blade Runner. And I thought, huh, perhaps genetics may be a controversial area. Uh, and uh, I started to really rethink what was important to me were the kinds of things that I found interesting. And I switched my major from uh, math to math and computer science. And from there, I, I got very involved with our uh, with some really uh, important scientists at, at, the, at the campus and got involved with uh, NASA research for uh, developing three-dimensional visualizations of the jet stream, uh, which is still in place today. We actually started it from, from very early days with uh, computer-aided uh, uh, design systems, as well as using a lot of data that we would get from airplanes who were actually flying over areas. And I found the science really, really interesting. And uh, I moved into earthquake research uh, as, uh, as I left school and found that even more exciting. I would go out to a, uh, an earthquake uh, or post-earthquake, we'd stick stakes in the ground and capture uh, seismic data and then capture that data and utilize that data so scientists could get to it and manipulate it. And no, they still can't determine uh, or predict earthquakes, but at least they knew what you know what caused them, and and to be able to address uh, evacuating people sooner and things like that. But uh, but I found at that point though it was really nice to be in uh, you know in the scientific field, but not necessarily financially. Uh, so I moved on to work in financial services as a developer, uh, and worked as an application architect. Uh, in, uh, in other areas and consulting. And then later I became the chief architect of a major uh, media company. Uh, and then I ended up here at Microsoft about exactly 10 years ago, uh, where I've been in different roles as an application architect, as an enterprise architect, and, and really helping our customers to understand the value of how to leverage our technologies to make them successful. That's pretty awesome. And that's an unconventional story, starting off in genetics, you know, that's pretty cool. So. You know, can you talk a little bit more? How did you, I know you talked briefly about making that pivot from genetics into tech. Did you have, did, was your education from gen, genetics able to port over easily to the software engineering world? Did you have to go back, take any um, classes, boot camps? It's um, interesting because I had, I, I had met one of the other genetic scientists who was working specifically on mapping the genome uh, or an exercise and effort to do that. And so he was using the same computer systems that I ultimately started to move to use, which was on the Unix platform, by the way, not a Microsoft platform. And uh, he, so I was pretty interested in, in the kinds of things he was doing and realized that there was going to be a real connection between genetic work and uh, technology in computer science. So we used the same computer lab and I ultimately moved into doing that other area of, of uh, leveraging uh, for different science. And for me, it was really meteoro meteorological uh, data and, can, and using that data to visualize uh, the jet stream and weather systems and things like that. So I found that what really got me excited at that time was the connection between technology and, and science. Uh, okay, so, yeah, as I yeah. said, though, after that, it, you know, it, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't very lucrative. Uh, okay. odd, oddly starting out at, a, you know, I think it was $20,000 a year or something like that. And I was, uh, uh, I was married and I was, it was just not not feasible to stay there, and and the uh, the Gulf War started as well, where a lot of the funding went into that instead of the kind of work the sciences were doing. 
but I, I ended up really lucky in, uh, in really meeting some really great people. Uh, I, I worked in New York City, so I had the opportunity to get to, you know, in, to network with people and uh, finding other, uh, other areas to work in. That uh, Also, it was very interesting. At the time, there were a lot more women in technology than I see today. Uh, I think when I first started out as a developer uh, in, qu in quality assurance, it, there, it was 50-50. And uh, the, the, the longer I've been in my career, the less women I would see in the, in the more senior level roles um, in, within the companies I worked for. I have a question for you. Do you, why? Why do you think the change? Um, do you think they just, they got tired, burned out? Um, they don't want to do it anymore? Do you got any, um, I guess, um, opinion on what happened? I think I think there's a, obviously a lot of factors, and and to be honest with you, it's very it's different here than it is in other countries. In India, there's a predominant uh, amount of women. It's probably more than fifty fifty there. But, but I think uh, I if if I could you know think about the times where I was sort of mentored to go down a different path, to go down project management instead of technology, uh, or to take on uh, uh, manager roles that had had no technology responsibility and things like that. I found a lot of times I would have mentors or managers who might direct me in those other directions. Uh, because of course, women are really good at planning and projects and stuff like that. And that's great, I was, but it wasn't the thing that interested me. Uh, and so a lot of women, I think, went went different routes, either toward management or toward sales or toward uh, or toward um, uh, project uh, management. And uh, it, and I think it became more clear as I, like I said, as I progressed in my career, as uh, as more senior I got. Uh, there's a lot of women that are developers today. Um, I'd have to say it depends on which technology or which organization you're talking about, but uh, there's still quite a lot of graduates uh, through um, uh, through different universities that are in uh, that are in technology. But I think it's again, it sort of shifts as you as you progress during your career. That's why I spend a lot of time mentoring. Actually, is I, I see this as a as a really big deal, uh, and uh, to me, I. I focus on women in technology. I, I, I typically have anywhere from five to 10 uh, mentees. Uh, in fact, I'm doing different groups now and, uh, and I mentor a lot of them specifically in early in career to help them to, to look at the options and to weigh those options as they are offered new roles or looking for new opportunities. That's awesome, man. You said something really impactful. And then you also jumped into the next question at the same time. Wow. One thing I, 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 what I'm learning from you right now is you knew what you wanted next for your career. So when you were told, like suggested to go down these paths, you was able to stand your ground and say, no, this is what I wanted to do. Um, I think that's really powerful because I had a similar background, right? Um, I got the gift of gab. Right. You know, I, I went to school for marketing and technology. Right. So most of the time I slide. Why don't you stay on the marketing side? I'm like, well, I like the tech. You know, uh, I do enjoy the tech side. But then I realize now I like the management. Now I want to go down that path because I like to teach people. That's why I do some of these channels. I like to train. I like to train, teach, educate. And I think management might be a better role for me than the tech because I like technology, but I like to use technology to empower people, right? I'm always teaching or giving back. Um, so just knowing where you want to go, I think that's a really big thing that you talked about because that's where I find when I'm mentoring to is they're asking, what should I do next? And I'm like, well, I can't answer you that. I mean, I can give you suggestions of what I did, right? But where do you? how do you like to spend your time? Where do you want to go? What do you see in the future? And if you don't know the answer to that, what career... Like, what career do you like or what person would you like to emulate, right? Because sometimes someone already is going down the road that you're going. Um, let's build it that way. So that was really cool. But um, this kind of jumps us into the next question is, what does, you know, mentoring mean to you? And how do you go about mentoring someone? Oh, it's, you know, I would, I, in my own personal career, I hardly ever had mentors, uh, and I always thought that it's going to be someone who's going to guide me, someone who's going to give me insight, someone who'd coach me. 
Uh, and so when I started to become a mentor, when I took on different roles as a mentor, whether it was for someone who was working with me or people outside of my area or what have you, I, I, I focused on the coaching side. I think when, one of the most important things is to not necessarily direct someone in, in a in direction, but to coach them on the kinds of things they may want to think about or the, the areas that, that are potential uh, that they could be considering, giving them a broad look at different things and also making introductions and bringing people uh, into communities where they can thrive. Uh, so I think all of those things are, are really a core to, to mentoring. I, I do a, a lot of different kinds of mentoring. And I think they're depending on what stage and career people are. I'll do more of the sort of, uh, and I like to give my own history and, and, and background, but that doesn't necessarily provide the guidance that someone needs, right? They may have a different path or they come from a different background. Uh, so I like to give, you know, the, the, have the discussion to have them talk about what they're feeling, what they want to accomplish, where they're thinking about going, what are the, the avenues they've pursued, what are the avenues they are considering when, when you're thinking about career path and things like that. And then on the other hand, when people are later in their career, uh, I, I think we spend a lot more time about how to how to build your network or how to leverage your network when you're looking for career options and things like that. I, I think it's been interesting because when I've grown my network, the more I've identified people that know each other without realizing it, right? So I'm connecting people uh, and being able to do and really help someone to make the connections that can help them be successful. And then there's a totally different area in mentoring, which is uh, around a Global Give Back Circle, which is an organization that helps young girls in uh, places like Kenya and India to be able to go beyond what they would possibly have been able to do if they hadn't got, been able to get uh, a, a good education. Uh, so I have two mentees, one of them who has, uh, who I was with all the way from when she was 17 and she's now, uh, she's now become a teacher, uh, you know, a chance that she would never have had if she hadn't gone to school. And I'm mentoring someone else uh, who I've uh, started about three years ago, and she has stu uh, been studying all along to get a, a career, and she's now going to go and take uh, to clinical studies to, to, uh, to do nursing. Um, and obviously she was influenced by a lot of things going on in the world today with COVID and so forth. Uh, but I think it's been, you know, that has been just as personally rewarding and it's a very unique thing. They're not women in technology, but they're women who would like to become professionals in a world where it's a lot harder for girls to do so. Uh, so all of those aspects, I think, are, are areas that I feel really, you know, really personally rewarded by help, helping people uh, and passing on the experiences and the knowledge and the networks and so forth that I've built up over the years. That's beautiful. I guess my next question is then, if one of, someone in my audience wants to become one of your mentees, um, what would you tell them and how would they go about doing that? Is that something you would do? Like, how do you know who you want to mentor? Actually, I, that people have reached out to me on LinkedIn uh, quite often, um, so that's uh, probably the best place to find me. Uh, and uh, if if you're a woman in technology, or or uh, I mentor a lot of men as well, but if you're looking to become someone who's involved in technology and you have aspirations to to take on different types of roles, uh, I that would be a great um, type of person that would be a good fit for mentoring. Um, and I think it, it, I've been also spending time with people in college uh, who are just trying to figure out, I mean, it's tough right now to really figure out where to, what else you need to do to, you know, from an education perspective or a learning perspective in order to get a job that uh, that's in technology. Uh, so I've spent some time with, uh, with folks in those programs as well. And uh, Microsoft Mentors is another program that I've, that I've been doing that with. Uh, where it's for uh, for people of different um, different locations around the world, uh, where they may need assistance in finding technology jobs. That's fantastic. Um, I guess my last question in one word: How would you describe a mentor? And you only got one word to do it. What word would describe a mentor for you? Coach. Mm. And what made you go with coach? Well, because I think that's the right style to mentor. Okay. 
uh, I think it's important to to realize you can't you can't tell people what to do. You need to coach them to think about how to how to identify what they really want to do and what what inspires them. That's great. And then one more is if I'm a student right now and I'm looking to get into the tech field, how should I start? Uh, where would you recommend I start? And I know that's a very vague question. It depends on what their background and interest is. But do you have any, gen, um, I guess, general information you would give someone this, to help them getting started? Well, it's interesting because I think in historically, my first answer to that would be find a good school or a good college to, you know, to get a good uh, computer science degree. But things have really changed over the past five, 10 years that it's, it hasn't necessarily become a requirement that you have a, a computer science degree to take in a technical role. So I think it's really about finding your passion. What is what it is about technology that inspires you and go down that path because there's, you know, there's so many different fields. You can use tech, you can be an artist and be in technology. You can be a, you know, a filmmaker and be in technology. You can be in, you can be a, a math major and be in technology. So uh, there's a, this diversity of thinking and experience uh, is something that uh, a lot of folks have to consider where that, where they want to go with that and how they want to take it. I think that's great because I, like, technology is a tool, right? It can help you do certain tasks, right? Like I like poetry, but then I realized poetry, if I can actually connect it with like an artificial, like a, a sentiment bot, it can help me see if my words are resonating with my audience, right? Yeah. So I even thought about building something like that. So when I'm doing my poetry, I can see if my words are actually resonating with the audience and you can have data so you can build new content. So it's even cool, like, or even for my YouTube channel, like I just use this platform to share technology and information experiences. And one thing that helped me is when I was younger, sometimes when I grew up in Brooklyn, I didn't have access to engineers. Like no one in my family was an engineer. You know, luckily my older brother was in IT as a sales manager and he was, you know, a math major. So he was really good at those things. So he showed me different things. So I was able just to see another world and I could find my interest from there. Um, so that's why I like to share these stories because I didn't even know you could become a genetic um, engineer or a genetic thing. I didn't know that was an option for me to do, right? So maybe if it was, maybe I would have tried that, right? So I think yeah. I just like to use technology to share those experiences because they're right there, right? Because, you know, and the hard thing is seeing someone that looks like you there, right? So that's one thing that helped me. I use LinkedIn to find other engineers. I'm like, all right, I could do this, right? You know, or does anyone has a marketing background and a tech background, right? Is that two things that go together? Like, do I am I on to something here? And I found people who did that, and I like those type of roles, right? So right. Um, that was something I use technology as well. So I, this was a fantastic conversation, very rich, and I don't want it to end. So I, the way we could keep it going is how can my audience contact you? I know you mentioned LinkedIn. Is that the best way for them to contact you? Yes. Yes, it is. I have a blog, but I don't keep it up. Uh, but yeah, you can catch okay. me on LinkedIn uh, and uh, uh, I just, just send a, a private message uh, and I'm happy to have a chat or, or set up a session. Fantastic. Well, that is all for us today, Kat. Thank you again for sharing your experience. Um, I think the audience is going to love it. And happy new year to everyone out there listening. Happy and new year. Sly Gittins and Cat are out. Peace.